Hey, welcome to the video guys. My name is Zach and I'm your strength coach. Uh, today we're going to be talking about warming up for a workout and it's going to be my goal to prove to you all right, that you shouldn't be static stretching. Uh, and it's probably for reasons that you're not thinking of, so there's a little bit of a twist to it. Uh, but if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you a better alternative to static stretching. So before we get into the reasons why you shouldn't be status stretching, uh, it's important to understand what it is, okay, and what's actually happening within the body. Within your body, you have proprioceptors, right, or sensory receptors that feed the brain information. And one of these that's important to this subject are called Golgi tendon organs, or GTOs. So I want you to think about the last time that you uh, did a static stretch. So for example, uh, maybe the last time that you stretched your hamstrings, uh, you leaned over, you felt a nice, uh, pull or, or tension in that muscle um, and then if you held it for long enough, if you held it for a good 30 to 60 seconds, all of a sudden you feel that muscle relax uh, and then you can actually push a little bit more forward uh, and you feel it re-tighten back up and then after another 30 seconds or so, you feel that muscle relax even more. Now what's actually happening, right, is that those sensory receptors in your hamstrings are feeling this change in length in the muscle. Right? And it's a pretty rapid and strong change of length, uh, so much that your GTOs, right, this is where they come in, send uh, information to the brain, letting it know that it needs to relax completely, right? Relax before it gets injured, before it tears, before it, it ruptures, and then all of a sudden you feel that muscle relax. Muscles aren't tight because they're actually shortened. Muscles are tight because they're over facilitated, right? Your nervous system constantly keeps them in this contracted state, okay, and that's why muscles are tight. There's no such thing as, as muscles permanently shortening down. No, they're over facilitated, the nervous system constantly recruits them, okay, and they're always in this contracted position. So now that you understand what static stretching is, okay, and what's actually happening with the body, all right, we're gonna start to get in uh, the topic of why you shouldn't be static stretching, all right, just stick around, I'm gonna be right back, okay? Welcome back, all right? Uh, before we get too far into these topics, okay, I wanna say that there, it's a large topic, right? We're starting to talk about uh, tonic and phasic relationships. We're starting to talk about posture, okay? And these are massive topics that I'm gonna do my best to kinda of explain uh, in only, you know, five to 10 minutes, but uh, if you really wanna dive into this more, okay, study the literature of Vladimir Yanda, okay, or, or Paul Check. Now I gotta be honest with you, right? I tricked you just a little bit. Static stretching is an incredible thing, it's a great thing, and it's something that I personally do before every workout that I do. However, the issue that I have is with general stretching routines, right? Aimless stretching, stretching all muscles. Now, in order for you to, to understand how this works, we're gonna look at one example all right, then you're gonna take this example and see how it can be applied to the rest of the body. So in order for you guys to, to visually see this and help you guys out more, we're gonna look at a diagram um, and let's just explain what you're looking at. So in the front, okay, the muscles that are in blue are what you can consider to be your hip flexors. Okay, so we have one of your quads muscles, right? Your rectus femoris right here, uh, your sartorius, and then of course the very common classic hip flexors up top. Now, if your hip flexors would uh, tighten up, okay, we know that it would pull the pelvis forward, right? So the pelvis would pull forward and down, okay, right? And we know that that's classically known okay, as a uh, anterior pelvic tilt, right? These muscles would come closer together and it would pull the pelvis forward. So let's look at the opposite side, right? If we look at the opposite side in the back, okay, we have your hamstring muscles. Notice that they attach to the uh, back side of the pelvis right here, okay? Now, if these muscles were to tighten, what they would do is what they would shorten, right? And they would pull uh, your pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt in which the pelvis, all right, tilted back and down. Let's take a classic example, an example that I suffer from, an example that many Americans suffer from, which is tightness in the hip flexors, 
right? And when that happens, as we already talked about, we have an anterior pelvic tilt that occurs, right? The pelvis tilts forward. This shortens, but what happens to the backside? If we look at the backside, if the pelvis tilts forward, your hamstrings will lengthen, right? They will get longer, okay? You just increase the distance between its origin and its insertion. Now remember, muscles get tight, right? Because they shorten, not because they permanently shorten, but because uh, they're in this contracted state, okay? But the nervous system learns this behavior, right? And this is why a tight muscle can stay tight for a very long period of time unless you retrain the nervous system. Now, what I just showed you with this example is that uh, your anterior muscles in the front, right, the hip flexors will shorten, and that the posterior muscles in the back, right, the hip extensors will lengthen. So why is this important? If I was one of your clients and I came to you with, with this situation, right, and I told you, uh, my hamstrings, they feel tight, right, your first recommendation would be to stretch them. But even though my hamstrings feel tight, I just proved to you that they're not. They're not actually short. Right? They feel tight, they feel like there's tension because my hamstrings are at its maximum length. They're being pulled, right? Pulled by the pelvis and they can't be pulled any further. That's that feeling of tightness. If you don't have a good understanding of posture and tonic and phasic relationships, there's a good chance that as a coach, you would stretch out my hamstrings. But why is this a bad thing? I just proved to you that the hamstrings are being pulled to its maximum length. Uh, so they can't stretch out any further. The next thing that's going to give, okay, is your tendon, all right? Made up of type two fibrocartilage. What's important to know is that your tendons, okay, uh, their job is to restrict tension, but if you pull them for long enough and hard enough, okay, they'll stretch out and they won't return back to original shape. Why? Because tendons have very little levels of elastin, right? Elasticity, the ability to return back to normal uh, shape. If you stretch out your tendon, okay, there's a good chance that you just permanently, okay, increase your chance of injury. Why? Because that joint is now hypermobile, right? You just increase the range of motion that that joint can perform, okay, and with an increased range of motion, more than you should have, okay, you have a lack of stability in that joint. In an honest effort, right, to, to stretch what you thought was a a tight muscle and to do a, a good thing, there, there's a chance, okay, that you could do or have the opposite effect to your body and do a bad thing, okay? When stretching, when static stretching, it's important that you or your coach has a good understanding of tonic and phasic relationships, of posture, and of assessing an individual before you have a stretching routine, right? Tight muscles, facilitated muscles need to be stretched. We, Weak muscles and log muscles need to be strengthened. This is why before every workout, okay, I have to stretch the muscles that are tight and, and too facilitated on me, okay? I have to strengthen and activate and facilitate the muscles that are too long and weak, okay? And this puts me into better posture, okay? And, and this sets me up for my workout. A better alternative, in my opinion, is some variation of myofascial release. Myofascial release, okay, is a pretty common and popular topic today. It involves any form of really compression of the body, right? Compression of the muscle. So popular ones could be uh, foam rolling is a popular one. Using tennis balls and lacrosse balls, right? Uh, getting massage is a form of, of myofascial release. Okay, but these two things, right? Uh, myofascial release and static stretching, they have the same end goal, right? which is relaxation of the muscle, right? It's not pulling the muscle, it's turning the muscle off. I hope you enjoyed the video, right, and learned something. I understand it's a lot of information in a short period of time. If you like the video and, and you learned something, uh, consider subscribing uh, and share the video. Um, leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think on the topic, okay? Let me know if you agree or, or disagree. Uh, but thanks so much for joining in today, okay? Hopefully you're one step closer to learn how to thrive. All right, peace.